Okay, so I'm getting to do my budgeting video because I'm crazy. I thought we had a play today at 1 and it's actually tomorrow at 9 a.m. So I don't really know how I mix up the day and the time so <laughs> crazy. Like that's just mother brain for you. But my day is a lot more free than I thought it was going to be. And so, <coughs> excuse me, um, I have time to do this video. So, for those of you who haven't been subscribers that long, I've shared this way in the past. We love the cash only envelope system. And so we have an envelope for everything that we use cash for. Just to give you an idea um, how far ahead I try to plan so that when things pop up, there's already money set aside for it. And a lot of people may think of a budget as constricting and strict and hard, but really it's freeing unlike you could imagine until you do it and experience it for yourself. It is so freeing because where before we used to not have some of these envelopes, when the things would pop up that we needed the money for it, it was like this big hit, financial hit, you know? But now that we're planning for it, when those things pop up, it's there, you know? So we do follow the Dave Ramsey tip, um, the baby steps, for the first step being have a thousand dollar emergency fund. So that is crucial to be your first step and we follow that and we have found that it's a very um, secure feeling to know that we can work on that, like um, tackling all these other financial goals and we know that if something were to pop up out of nowhere, we have an emergency fund set aside. So we have all these other financial goals, goals but they came after first succeeding in that emergency fund, $1,000 emergency fund. Step two is get out of debt. We have some short-term goals, some long-term goals of getting out of debt. Um, our short-term goals included or include saving up for a new vehicle for my husband um, and paying off the small uh, loan that we got for my van. It's really, really small. We'll probably pay it off this month. And I have a list of our short-term goals and our long-term goals on the wall in our bedroom so that we both see it and we both get motivated when we see that big check mark next to it and cross that thing out on to the next goal. And it's really motivating. It's been exciting to accomplish those short-term goals together. We're about to knock out one uh, because this month was absolutely amazing with Hector joining my Juice Plus team. We got tons of bonuses and more customers than we've had in like eight months. So, and we had six new team members. So it was an amazing, amazing, very successful month. And so now because of the amazing financial blessing that this month has provided, we're gonna probably knock out one and a half of our next two short-term goals. And um, then we'll just have a little more to go and then we're gonna get it in the long stretch of the long-term goals, which is student loans. We are going to tackle those and try to knock them out within the next year and a half or two years. So that's the hope, that's the goal. You can never, you know, have any guarantees, but that's our plan. And we're trying to be wise and discerning and responsible with the things the Lord's given us. We want to be good stewards. Um, so that is our plan. And then um, every single week on payday, I go to the bank and I get all the cash we need. And I leave in the account the money that is going to be automatically withdrawn for health insurance or our juice plus or um car insurance whatever you know all the little automatic withdrawals i pay our cell phone over the phone so that i leave that in the account as well and just anything like that so i have a certain dollar amount that every paycheck i leave that dollar amount in the account for those expenses and then i pull out the cash and my bank is so awesome <laughs> they like break it all down for me because some of these are like $13. So I need three singles. So I'll get a certain amount of hundreds, certain amount of 20, certain amounts of tens, fives, and singles. And they break it all down for me. And then I can come home and distribute the money accordingly. So just to give you an idea of what's in our cash budget, we, I save for homeschool stuff for um, investing in new curriculum material, uh, the umbrella school, any field trips that I would like to take the kids on. I save for that on a weekly basis. Gas, clothing for myself, 
I only give myself $10 a week, okay? Just to give you an idea. Um, and those that's one of the newer things in our budget. Actually, gas has always been in our budget, obviously. The homeschool stuff, my clothes, $10 a week, those are new. And I'm so happy about the clothes budget because very often we would not save at all for clothing or anything. Then we would all need new shoes and new this and new that. And we'd go to the store and overspend. And then it was like stressful from the financial hit that we just put on ourselves. So instead, this is like you have this, save it up, use it for something you want. You have this again, save it up. Um, so it's really freeing when we go to the store and we spend $40 on clothes because it was in the envelope for the last four weeks, you know? So that's been huge. Um, my dog's medication and food, that's always been in the budget. Utilities, obviously, has always been in the budget. Clothing for my husband, that has not always been in the budget. That's new and I'm very happy about it. Again, for the same reason. Rent, of course. Groceries, of course, always been in the budget. My husband's medication, he has asthma, so he has to get medication. And before, we wouldn't budget for it. And it was like $80. And it's like, oh my goodness, that's huge, you know? But now we're saving for it, so when he needs it, it's there. Haircuts has always been on my budget, because you know, well, I cut my boy's hair. I cut my hair like once a year, and Hector won't let me touch his hair, so we have to get that professionally done, so we save that. Um, Christmas gifts, this is new, and I'm so happy we're doing this because it has taken off such a burden for um, making sure that we have money to spend on my nieces and nephews and our kids for Christmas. We're not going crazy. We're saving $10 a week for the last like six weeks, and now I upped it to $20 a week because I'm no longer saving for Thanksgiving. I was saving for Thanksgiving, but now it's gone, so I took that envelope out until next year. We were also saving for our weekend in Nashville uh, for the Juice Plus Conference, and that passed already, so that envelope is out. So that's extra money that we were budgeting two months ago that now it's just up in the air. So we, I added some to the Christmas gift fund and um, tithe and whatever else, you know? Um, then I have a gift envelope for baby showers, birthday parties, whatever. That's always been in the budget. We're going to the Grand Canyon in March. So what I've done is counted all the weeks between now and our actual trip and asked my husband, how much do you want to have on hand to spend on our vacation? He gave me a dollar amount, so I divided it by that many weeks, and that's how many we're putting aside every week. Come March, when we take our vacation, we'll have all this extra weekly money that we've been putting in this envelope to do, use it for something else. So that's really cool. So that's been awesome. That's a new one. Um, house decor, I don't put money in this every week. When there's something to spare, I'll put 10 bucks in. Right now, I'm trying to save up for towels. So I bought two towels last week. I need some more. So I'm gonna uh, accumulate, let some money accumulate in there and get some towels. House repairs, right now we need to replace a door that's like rotting from the rain. So we're putting in there. These are all new, that's really good. This one's new and I am so happy that we added this. This was a friend's uh, suggestion and I can already feel like oh, the weight lifted. Car registration, how often does that thing just sneak up on you and then all of a sudden you have this expense that you didn't you know, expect. Car registration, woo, I'm so happy about that. Date night. We don't save for this every week, but most weeks I put some money in there so that we can go on a date. We are going to build a chicken coop and buy chickens in the spring, so I'm saving for that. And again, when that happens, that will turn into just chicken feed envelope, um, which I'm sure all the money I'll be saving on eggs will pay for the feed. And then boys clothing, this is also a new one. Um, so that's in there and then tithe, of course, not right now, baby. And then our tithe, which that's usually in the front, but <laughs> it was the last one tonight. So we used to have just this many and from revisiting our budget and wanting to be really responsible with where all the little extra money that falls in between that's not expected, we've added all of these. Also with planning ahead for the Grand Canyon, the chicken coop, the homeschool stuff, the registration. Um, Thanksgiving, I, I planned ahead. Christmas, I'm planning ahead. That's been really, really helpful. So this is super exciting. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I, 
excuse me, am anti credit cards. Do not believe in credit cards. I believe if you don't have the money for something, you don't buy it. You save up for it and then you buy it. And you just aren't a slave to debt that way. You aren't a slave to the lender that way. Um, I do think that debt can sometimes be used as a tool uh, with the right discernment. Hey baby, please don't yell. With the right <clears throat> plan in place and discernment, debt can be used as a tool. So I'm not saying debt is wrong, of course not. We got a really, really small loan for our van because we didn't want to deplete our saving account to get this van, but we didn't want to let that deal pass up because it was an amazing purchase for the price, for the condition. It's just a great van and we don't want to lose the opportunity. So instead of taking everything out of our saving and buying it cash, and then we have a van with no money, we went ahead and took a very small loan out. So we still had a cushion in our savings account and we got the van we wanted. And then we are now, you know, we'll pay off the van within three months of purchasing it. So that was our plan and we stuck to it. And I think that it's okay to use debt as a tool sometimes. Um, so that, but I definitely would advise to not have credit cards, to not use credit cards and, um, to have goals laid out for yourself so that you can know where you're headed with your money. Um, and to just stick to the budget. I mean, the money's there. I can easily say, Hmm, we have no more grocery money, but I really want to buy this. So I'm going to steal some from the gas envelope, but no, no, I don't let myself do that because then I, I'm not being disciplined. I'm not, I'm not going to do better next time with the grocery budget because I realized, Hey, I ran out. And then what if we need gas, then what I'm going to take it from something else. So it's just, you know, a good discipline, a good practice, a good habit to be in. And some months you'll have more money than others. Some months you um, will have less money than others. So you just have to be discerning which envelopes you're going to not put money in for this week or whatever, you know, um, this month, thankfully we have a lot more than usual. So I'm sure we're going to pay off some of our goals and save a lot towards the Grand Canyon and we'll see what else, you know? So, and then of course, give, give, give. And the first fruits of your income should go to the Lord. Um, he has been faithful to provide for you. We need to be faithful to obey him and tithe. So that's our budget. And um, I hope that's helpful. You guys feel free to ask me any questions, anything I may have missed or not um, covered. And um, I will be happy to share uh, more information with you. Oh, how funny. I didn't even mention saving. <laughs> if you are debt free and you have no financial goals as far as paying stuff off, then you should try to save um, 10 to 15 percent of your income. And um, if you're investing in a 401k or a Roth IRA, 15 percent is the the suggested by financial advisors percentage of your income but if you can't do that anything's better than nothing so we are we do have a Roth IRA we do have a 401k we do save but because we're on this get out of debt path saving is on the back burner right now right now we want to save but we want to get out of debt first so when we're out of debt then we'll save so that's why I didn't even talk about saving because that's the journey we're on right now but if you don't have any debt then save give budget and invest for sure. I mean, that's our plan for later. Um, we want to give and invest and save later. Um, right now we just have to get out of debt with, um, our student loans. And I mean, we've been married 10 years, so we've had these loans for 10 years, but only now, uh, are we finally financially able to tackle these loans? So I'm, I'm so thankful to the Lord for that for the providing the increase in, in finances for our family that we're able to get on this journey that we've been wanting to be on for quite some time. It's just never been financially possible before. So anyway.